I'm Philip Fordich from the Future Perfect company, um, which I set up about three years ago now um, as an online destination for older people to find well-designed lifestyle products. And I think you know, what's become very apparent this evening is just that there is a real dearth of these products on the market at the moment. And so one of the other things that I was very keen to do at the same time as setting up the company was to try and encourage designers to focus on this area. And I think we had some um, discussion earlier on about how do you actually go about doing that. The way that I decided to do it was to go um, to the University of Brighton, which um, I think is probably one of the leading arts universities in, in the UK. I'd had a long-standing relationship in particular with the Faculty of Arts, um, and I was very fortunate to be allowed to bring my project into the university. I set it up as a student design competition for two reasons. Um, one was that that's a fairly um, easy way of bringing projects into a university. It doesn't require much paperwork, you can basically sort of plug in and play. And the second was, I really wasn't at all sure the students would be that interested three years ago about design for ageing. And by making the project a competition, it was really a way of incentivising them to take part. And one of the good things about the, the project as it has progressed is that actually the competition element of it has become less important and we're actually moving to more of a mentoring model as, as we go on. And the third element that I thought was very important was to have some industry input, albeit that the industry is quite fragmented at the moment for, for this market, but I've been very lucky um, to have um, a number of judges from um, lots of different disciplines, some of whom are here today actually, who are willing to sort of go through the process with us and, and give um, the benefit of their experience. So the designing for the future competition started about three to four years ago as well. And the brief is really wide ranging. Um, I didn't want to be too prescriptive as to um, the sort of products that I was expecting. Um, design for ageing is a very new area for me as well. My um, original career is as a lawyer. And so this was very much a learning curve for me, um, really just to investigate what it all meant um, and what sort of products were, were really needed. The structure of it is quite simple. Um, we go in and set the brief at the beginning um, of, of the project. Um, typically, we're um, setting it with 3D design students, both BA and, and at MDES, um, and typically they're second years, although um, we've had third years um, have been coming back and showing us the, the progression of their work. We have a midway review and then an industry panel at the end where by the students present their work and we look at the prototypes. A very important element has been the publicity and the showcasing of the project. Um, we've been very lucky to be able to showcase at events like the Mobility Roadshow um, in the design zone for the past couple of years. We've been at the Basra Science of Ageing Conference. I've spoken a lot about the competition in, in for different organisations and it, what has been fantastic is that people have actually been really interested in what we've been doing and it's been creating a touch point for discussion about design for ageing. At the same time as running the competition with Brighton, I also run a similar competition with uh, my local sixth form college, um, and between the two I have about 100 students a year going through the competition, so it, it's, it's, it's quite big. <laughs> In terms of what's come out of it, um, as I said at the beginning, I wasn't really sure what I was going to get from the students. Um, it, it was a new, quite a fairly new topic for the university itself. I think the tutors and course leaders have with me been really kind of learning as to how we present the brief. Um, and I think my worst case scenario actually was getting 100 kettle tippers, which I think we saw earlier. But actually the, the themes that have come out have been really diverse um, and have touched on lots of different things, um, including things like loneliness and social exclusion, but also other things like older parenthood. You know, we've got an increasing number of people becoming parents at 50, you know, some fathers at 60. You know, that all has impact for people. A lot of work about intergenerational interactions. I mean, in, in the context of the competition, we have younger, typically younger design students um, designing for older people, and that's been very interesting to have, you know, essentially young designing for old, and what, what does that mean? Um, we've got products that um, address particular issues like dementia, face blindness, but also more generally, how do you keep your mind active? Um, what sort of things um, do we want in terms of memorial or celebration of life lived? And I think for me the biggest learning point has been actually, although this has been a 3D design competition, it's not just about the stuff. 
you know, the, it's, it's not something, the design isn't something you can do in isolation. There has to be user input, there has to be empathy. Um, the best designs have meaning of some sort and, and one of the great strengths of the Brighton course is, is that um, students have workshops, they make things and actually there's been something very powerful about handmade objects and products. Um, we've talked I think earlier about you know, products that are surprising, you know, there's no reason why um, products of this uh, sort of market should be dull and indeed we've had lots of fun products as well you know things that have made us laugh you know and, and that's a, you know hugely important I think and also inclusivity of, obviously has become a very um, strong point and the, and, the, and the best designs have, have been as relevant to younger people as they have been to older people. Um, as I say, we've had a huge number of projects through the competition the past few years um, here are just a few of them um, I, I thought I just might mention this um, one here with the, the teacups, just because I think on the radio this morning um, there was an announcement about the government going out to try and find lonely people for some sort of a study. And, and obviously the, the issue of loneliness and social, social isolation amongst the elderly is, is a huge problem for us. Um, and this, this central um, image here is, is a product by Florence Pike, who was a runner-up in our competition last year. And what Florence was looking at was, well, how about we reimagine the, the typical garden fence as a meeting point rather than a barrier between neighbours? And how do we get neighbours to interact with each other? And her solution was a, actually a fence filial, I don't know if you can see it there, which is made out of copper, which takes a cup of coffee or tea. And the idea being that once you put out your finial, the neighbour is invited to come and share tea or coffee with you. It's a quite a, a sort of a subtle signal that you're ready to, to interact. And it, it's designs like that, I think, that have, have been really powerful in, in terms of what we've done. Just before I um, introduce um, a couple of our designers, I just wanted to talk briefly about the next steps of the competition um, so you can kind of gauge where we're, where we're at. Um, we're about to go into the fourth year at Brighton and the third year at Colliers. We're looking at some sort of dedicated website um, to start publishing the work and disseminating you know, really our learning um, as we go. I've been approached by students from other universities and other organisations saying, you know, I, I wished I'd, I knew about this when I was doing my final year project because I think there are a lot of students designing, you know, for the final year but they don't actually you know, have the contacts or whatever and this, this would be a great portal, you know, to, for, for them to connect out with like-minded um, students. Um, because we're, you know, one of the strengths of the competition is that we're into our you know, third or fourth years, we're creating a great pipeline of designers and makers. Um, we're going to hear from a couple of them in a minute and you know, it's, it's a great joy to me that there are people graduating from the courses and actually wanting to look at subjects like this and I think that's a great testament I think to the passion of everybody who's involved in the project. And at the University of Brighton itself, they're about to launch a new Design Futures programme um, next year, which will be both undergraduate and postgraduate, and they're actually going to have an element there on design for ageing, so it's great to see ageing being um, taken into the curriculum in a, in a formal way. As I said, one of, one of the great um, successes, I think, of, of what we've been doing is that we have actually succeeded in focusing um, the new generation of designers on, on products um, for this area. And I've got a couple of them here who are going to come and t talk to you about their work um, that's come and been associated with the competition, um, but they're now sort of trying to take it a stage further. And so the first one we have is Hannah. Can I pass it over to you? Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'm Hannah Morby. Do you need me to do something? Oh, yeah. Please don't do. I'm just going to put a little thing on. Is that okay? Okay. So um, I'm Hannah Morby. Uh, I'm a designer, a, a new designer. Um, I'm interested in making everyday medical aids more pleasurable to use. Um, I graduated from the University of Brighton uh, with a master's degree uh, in design and craft in June this year um, and I decided I wanted to take a few of my projects a little bit further. 
um, as part of a, a wider project I did um, about making assistive technology um, more interesting and pleasurable for um, the patients to use, um, I designed and made an asthma inhaler case in silver. Um, I didn't really think that it would take off at the time, uh, but it was a conceptual piece um, that was exploring desirability, uh, functionality and craft versus, uh, versus mass manufacturer. Um, I worked very closely um, with a group of patients um, to design the pieces um, and I wanted to reflect the desires um, and uh, needs of those patients. So with the asthma inhaler, um, the patient described that she would often leave it at home because she was embarrassed um, about it and she wouldn't put it in a handbag. So I wanted to make it in silver, precious metal, uh, which has elements of desirability attached to it. So I put pictures of my work on my website and I got attention uh, from bloggers, other designers uh, and potential customers. Philippa very kindly supported me um, and has promoted my project through her website blog on um, the Future Perfect Company blog. Um, and my work has been bought by a private collection and I've just recently been represented by a gallery in York. Um, I started to get regular emails from potential customers, so I thought it would be a good idea to turn my idea into reality. Um, so I've been trying to, for the last two months, develop my ideas um, into a range of products. Um, so the stage I'm now at is that I'm sourcing funding uh, so I can stock up on materials because um, the types of things I'm trying to use, like precious metals and things, do cost money. Um, I want to get a bigger studio. At the moment I've got a tiny little space and I really want to develop the branding. Uh, so I work part-time. Uh, I'm getting by on the bare minimum uh, because I believe that it's got the potential to be really big. So I hope you think so too and enjoyed my presentation. Thanks. We just do it. Yeah. Just do it that way. Yeah. And next up, we've got Chloe, who's going to talk about her music memory box. <coughs> Hello, I'm Chloe Minek, um, and I'm in the process of setting up my own design company. One of my products I'm developing is the music memory box for people with dementia. I first saw the power of music had on dementia sufferers when I visited my great gran in a care home. Uh, although she couldn't remember any of her family members, she could play piano, both hands, and remember about 50 songs and all the lyrics. This early experience and the opportunity that Philippa's competition gave me has developed into the music memory box. So each music memory box is created using a series of co-design sessions with the box owner and their families. Through storytelling, we collect, collate their music, most important people, objects and music. We create a highly personal, multi-sensory reminiscent box. The box works by each handmade object having an embedded tag inside, which when put in the centre of the box, sets off an individual piece of music. The box uses open source technology using Arduino, and I learned how to program um, to make the box. Um, so I've had lots of press since exhibiting in Tent London, New Designers, 100% Design, um, and lots of articles written about it on, on Wired and Design Milk. Um, but most recently, I won a residency with Crafts Council. Part of this residency will be creating another bespoke memory box and a communal group box for a care home, and also developing a business plan to get communal boxes so each person has an object and you come to the box in a communal activity to listen to everyone's favourite music. Um, so I'll be developing this on the residency. Um, I've got the box with me at the back of the room, so I'll be giving demonstrations after the talks and happy to talk to anyone. Thank you. Thanks to all three. Wonderful. Um, so a quick time for questions. My question for, for all three of you really is, what are the biggest barriers that you've encountered in taking your great ideas into market to actually make them big products that are going to be then taken up by, by a broad number of people? Any of you? <laughs> I think money. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a big barrier. I think the other... Um, difficulty that we've had, and I, I know a couple of um, the other designers that I work with have, is actually finding user groups. Um, 
it is quite difficult. I think we've we've got through problems with CRB checking, haven't we? And and, and actually, you'd be surprised. Uh, criminal records, oh, criminal records. Checks. Okay. Um, it's actually quite difficult to find a group of older people mm. um, <laughs> or, or you know or someone specific to your your product without having to pay a great deal of money um, and we're hoping um, to be able to crack that through um, various means next year but I think that has been a real barrier to actually take us all right. these projects forward interesting yeah any other thoughts questions for the these designs yeah um, about the music memory box and first and foremost it's a beautiful thing. Um, do you think there's a danger that potentially by bracketing it as a product for potential to aim memory in a negative way? So you know, it's a positive result but a negative description. You know, I was just thinking that my eight year old daughter would love that. Mm. Absolutely adore that. And my memories are very important. Yeah, I'm I'm generally because I'm trying to get funding, I have people say, what's your market? So I'm starting with this. But I'm also thinking about um, people with cancer. They often make memory boxes for their children, so I'm talking to companies that do that. It's anyone. You have a great sailing trip. You, have a, you buy, a, say, a boat, a ceramic boat. Why not embed a song onto that? So there's lots of ways for expansion. But I want to focus on one thing, get that right first, and then develop it all. Right. All right, okay, brilliant. Thanks very much. Thank you.